Hey guys, Jason here with the One Stop How To Guys, bringing you episode 22 of Practical Drupal Development. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to search your site using the search module. Now, Drupal Core comes prepackaged with a default search module, and it works fairly well, but there's not a whole lot of customization that you're able to do with this module. You can't really tell the site what you want it to search and what you don't want it to search. It just kind of scans the whole site and searches everything. Um, but we have items here like these homepage slider nodes that we don't ever really want our end users ending up on. However, if they can search for it through the search, they can find their way to that page. So what we're going to do is we're going to download and install a module called Custom Search. And now this will be in the description as usual, usual. So head on over there, download this module and extract it into your sites all modules. Now what this module does is it allows us to customize a whole lot more of the search functionality process on our Drupal site. So go ahead and get that downloaded. Come back over to your site and let's hit modules here at the top. And there's a couple things we need to turn on. The first thing that we need to turn on is in core, and we need to turn on search. Now, it's already on on mine, so it may be on yours as well. So we need to make sure that search is on because what we're doing with custom search is simply extending the functionality of this module. So we'll scroll down here and we need to find custom search. Now what we want to turn on is custom search itself as well as the custom search blocks. Now this is going to allow us to have blocks um, that we can place in any one of our block regions that will serve as um, the custom search. And we will save that. All right, once that's saved, we're going to go ahead and close this down, let Drupal refresh itself as it always does. Um, and then we're going to come up here to configuration. And under search and metadata, we're going to click on this custom search option here. Now you can see that there are four tabs in the top right corner, and we are not going to cover all of the things that this module will do in particular. But if you look through here, you can see some of the default setup stuff for custom search. You can have a label show. I'm actually going to turn that label off because we're going to do some cool stuff with jQuery in the theming portion of it. I'm going to delete this out as well. Um, you have the option here in the submit button sections to actually have it have text on it. So if you're searching for a particular content type like a home if you're doing real estate or something like that. You can put in search homes or just homes in the area or whatever it is you wanted to do or you can submit a custom image that will serve as the submit button. So that's kind of nice to have there and we're going to go ahead and save that. The next tab here is the content tab. Now, these are not quite what you think sometimes. Uh, there is a way to exclude particular parts of content so you can get rid of like the about section or the basic page. This is not what this is here. This is a more like a content selector where next to your search box, there will be a drop down that will allow you to specify these particular types of content. We're not going to do that because one, I think it looks tacky and two, sometimes your content type names don't really make any sense to an end user. So we're just going to ignore that. But this content exclusion here at the bottom is the whole purpose for us installing this module. This allows us to say, Drupal, I want you to search this entire site, but I want you to omit the following items. And what do we want to omit? We want to omit our homepage slider and our social media links. Now, we can let them search all these other pages because eventually they're going to end up on those pages somewhere in the site anyways. But the social media icons, if you remember, that actual node is just a small picture and a link. There's really no need for them to ever find this node because it's at the footer of the site and functions the way that we need it to there. The homepage slider, we didn't really, we're not going to theme those pages. We're not going to make them look any special. It's just an image and a link. So 
it's best that people don't find their way to these pages. So we'll save that, and now Drupal will omit those items when it does its search. Now the search blocks here allows you to add more blocks. Um, so right now we have by default it comes with a single custom search block. But what if you wanted a search block in the header and one in the footer and you wanted them to do different things? Well, in here you could come in and you could change this number to two and then when you go to structure blocks, you will have two custom search blocks available to you and we'll be showing you some stuff here in a minute as to how you can customize those blocks individually so that they function differently. Remember, what we're doing now is just setting up like the global defaults. Um, so. You can add another search block if you really wanted to there. Now the results page, there is some changes we need to make in this page as well. I'm going to take off the advanced search since we're just going to be kind of doing a, a simple custom search here. So we want them to be able to use the basic search. And uh, the search results thing here, what this does is it shows the content type, the user, the date, and any comments on the search results page itself. Again, I think this looks a little bit tacky and also doesn't serve much purpose unless you're doing articles and you want to show the user and the date. You might want to leave those on, but I'm going to turn them all off just because I don't think it looks good and I don't really think that it serves much of a purpose and it takes longer to load those elements on the page. So we're going to go ahead and do that, close that down, and we have all of our global defaults set up. So let's come up here into Structure Blocks. And if we scroll all the way down, you'll see we have Custom Search 1. Now, if we had changed that number to 2 immediately below it, you will see Custom Search 2. And all we're going to do here is we are going to throw this guy up in the header and save this. And we'll close that down. And now you'll see that we have our search block here in the top. If we click on the little gear icon and configure the block, you can see that those items that we had in those global defaults are here again. Now, because this one was already kind of created for us, some of the global defaults didn't take effect to this particular block, so we're going to have to do that here too. We're going to take the label off, and we're going to leave that at search. But here's where the power of custom search comes in with multiple search blocks because you can have different submit buttons for each one of your blocks. You can also come down here and click on the content and scroll down and you see that you have your own independent content exclusion. So here we're going to have to turn off homepage slider and social media. But this is independent for each one of your search blocks. So you may have a search block that's simply on all of your news articles that only searches your news articles. And then you have one in the header that searches the entire site. And you can configure that to only do that with this little uh, content exclusion area on each block. And it gives you a whole lot more control over how your site searches searches and over what that block does. So we're going to go ahead and save that now. And there we go. We have our search block. Now, your search block may not work right away. Um, we know that we have the word lorem on several different content areas here. And if we pop that in and search you'll see that we're pulling up some results, but this may or may not be all of the results. And let me show you why. If you come up to configuration, search in metadata, and just click search settings, you'll see that right now my site is 100% indexed. And that is because search was turned on when we started building our site. That's not always the case. Sometimes you turn search off because you don't need it. You build a site and then six months later they come back and say, hey, we want to have a search functionality on our site. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to re-index the site to show you what it looks like. Um, and uh, we'll just re-index here. 
and you can see that it's now at 0%. And it says that there are 23 items left on our site that need to be indexed. And what that means is there are 23 items left on the site that we need to scan through and find all their words and phrases. Otherwise, your search results won't work. And the best way to test it is to get your site built, get your custom search up, and either come to this page and see if it's pulling any kind of results or you could just type something into the search box and if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work and you need to come index. Now, you can index a certain number of items per run. Um, 100 is pretty good. You can do 500, but sometimes it takes a while. And, it's, and since we only have 23 items here, I'm just going to kind of leave this. I might drop it down to 50. And then we need to save that. And now search will index the site on cron run, which means in order to get this to do anything, we need to come up here to this little home icon and just click run cron. And this is going to kind of do a bunch of actions, a lot of modules hook into cron so that every time cron runs it does something and you can set cron to run whenever you want. We're not really going to cover a lot of cron because it can get, become quite a hefty topic here. So we're just going to leave it as we're, we need to go up there and run that cron in order to um, index our site. And you can see here at the end it'll run a report for you. If you have any missing JavaScript libraries, if there's any updates or any kind of issues with your site, you will see them on this page. So we're going to close that down and we'll pop back up here to search and meta and search settings and you'll see that we are 100% indexed which means that our site will be searching just fine. So now we'll click the home tab here and I want to show you something. If you right click and open in an incognito window, if you're using um, Google Chrome, you'll notice that your search is not there. And that's a bit of a problem because the whole point of having search is so that your users can search it when they're on your site. But if it's not there when you're logged out of the site, that's a bit of an issue. And all that is is simply a permissions issue. And we haven't really covered permissions too much, um, but what they are are they they allow you to specify certain things that certain roles can do so you can create a role for a user account that may be the site administrator or you may make one for site developers who have access to everything and we will cover this I promise in much greater detail in the future here this is one of those other topics that we really need to talk about creating user types and users so for now all we need to know is that Drupal comes prepackaged with three user types that you can set people as. An anonymous user, which is just any person who is on your site, not logged in, just visiting. An authenticated user is a user with some sort of user sign-in, user login information. And then the administrator is usually that account which gets all the administrative purposes to create content types and do that kind of stuff. So... The problem that we're running into right now is that custom search by default, this use search blocks, is not set to anybody but the site administrator, which means when you're logged out, you can't use it. So we need to turn that on for all of these guys. And then also, if we scroll down here to the bottom, search to use search is not also turned on for anyone. So we'll have to turn that on and then we'll save this. So it's just kind of a it's, a, it's a little bit of a pain. You kind of wish they would turn that on by default, but sometimes your search is only for people who can be logged in. Um, but now if we open this in an incognito window, you'll see that our search is there. We could search for whatever it is that we need to search for, and that will take us to Drupal's default search results page. So that's it. That is how you get a search functionality up and running on your site. It is also how you install custom search to really hone in on just the content that you want searched so that you have more control and more power over your website and what people can and cannot see. So we're gonna, we got a few more things that we're going to be covering here in the next few episodes, but if you like this episode, make sure that you hit the little like button underneath it, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you in the next episode of One Stop How-To Guys Practical Drupal Development.